I love the little lady who announces the recording. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, this is a webinar through Seekers Evolving um, and we're gonna be talking about the spirit team. Let's go ahead and start screen sharing. So y'all can see my cute presentation I worked on. Okay, let's see, all right, let me pop it up. Can everybody see okay? Yes, in the thumbs up in the chat. So, okay. All righty. All right, I'm just pulling everybody up. Yes, I love the rainbow vibes. I just had to do it. Oh, letting somebody else in. Okay, for everybody new, we're getting started. Um, Y'all haven't missed anything. I decided to start a little bit late. So, all right. So, um, my name's Carrie. Um, we're gonna be exploring the spirit team today. Um, I'm the founder of Seekers Evolving, which is of course the website that um, this was booked through. Um, whether you're familiar or this is your first kind of experience with us, uh, we're all about uncovering authenticity and whatever that means for us individually and um, as a collective. Uh, let's see. Uh, so throughout the process, you're welcome to chat in um, the little chat section. Um, I just ask that until we get to the Q and A portion, that you just keep yourself um, muted, um, just so that it doesn't um, interrupt with like the feedback or anything from the um, with the presentation. But um, just keep things respectful. Um, I'm sure that I might bring up something that maybe you don't 100% agree with, or that's new information, and that's totally cool. Um, you're welcome to take what resonates for you all from this um, from this webinar, but I just ask that if you're engaging with other people in the chat, just keep it respectful and keep it friendly, and we're going to do our best to kind of keep, I, I'm bad about the rabbit trail, so we're going to do our best to keep this um, uh, generally focused on the topic of the spirit team. But I'm Carrie. Um, I use the pronoun she, they. Um, I'm a queer uh, medium and eclectic witch. I also practice the modality of energy weaving, which is an energy work technique that I channeled from past life soul mastery. My um, uh, mediumship and energy weaving give me a very multidimensional approach to working with my spirit team that is constantly evolving. Um, I, I can look back from five, 10 years ago to even a year ago, and it has drastically been in a process of evolution, um, even within like the last couple of months. So I'm sure that's the same for everyone involved. Um, it will always, just as we're always changing and growing, so does our relationship and our understanding of our spirit team. Um, but by working with my spirit team, um, it's very foundational to my spiritual practice, and I kind of call them the, uh, like our foundational and like our first support system, um, especially from a, sp a spiritual lens. But um, I hope that throughout this process, I can help you guys have um, a deeper relationship with your team as well, and maybe inspire you to some new information or uh, new techniques that you hadn't thought of uh, yourself. See. Sorry, there's a bit of a lag with it uh, switching. Okay, uh, so what is a spirit team? Um, a lot of what we're going to talk about um, throughout this process is what um, you call uh, UPG, uh, unverified personal gnosis. A lot of this is just my experience and uh, my perspective on the spirit team, as well as a little bit of uh, uh, shared personal gnosis. Um, there are some things that I bring up that are commonly discussed um, across other uh, cultures and groups um, historically relating to um, the idea of um, a team. 
especially when we get into some of the types of members of a team. But I just want to like make that note. And of course, use your discernment with any knowledge that you engage with that um, this is my experience. But when it comes down to that, um, I really find that it's very helpful when discussing UPG or discussing spiritual topics and just philosophical or more nuanced topics in general to kind of understand your own personal definitions of things, your own personal perspective of um, kind of what a term or an idea means to you. And that way, even if it's a little different for someone else, you both can kind of at least have that framework of understanding of that root um, idea that we're working off of, of what a spirit team um, is. Um, I, I recently, I, I, I will probably share it in the email because I think it will be helpful. Um, I recently wrote about the idea of um, de defining things from a spiritual uh, point of view and how helpful that can be with understanding things. Um, but I also, you know, with that same thing in mind, um, the idea of what a spirit team is and who is included um, is going to vary by cultural and religious beliefs. And that's great. That's exactly what it should be. And we'll kind of talk a little bit about that more as we get into this. Um, but I want to share my personal definition of the spirit team that we'll be working off of. And um, that is um, the spirit team, a group of beings in mutual structured agreement to aid in a soul's personal growth through a multidimensional scope of engagement. Um, um, I really find that the spirit team helps with both embodying um, ourselves on an individual level and what it means for us to be alive and experiencing the world through our own lens and our own experience. But I also find that they're um, a very healthy and empowering example of community. Um, and that's something that uh, as you talked about a little bit, but not too much and I wanted to bring that up, that um, a lot of us have grown up with maybe not the healthiest um, experiences of community. Um, and I think that's pretty common uh, on earth in general, um, not the case for everyone, but um, part of the human experience sometimes involves like complicated um, experiences. And I find that our spirit team is a really, really um, healthy, example of a community that we can work with and learn how to engage with others in um, a healthy interpersonal um, way. And I find that they, um, even when it comes down to like, um, a lot of times my spirit team members don't like me talking down on myself or um, even um, about like other people or something like that when I was still kind of growing in my processes. And so they really help me frame things and like understand things from a way that's a little bit more honest and um, um, respects the ch exchange between different perspectives and different um, individuals. So uh, don't forget that, that while your spirit team is there for you and they're there to make sure that you're the best that you can be, um, that interpersonal relationship, working with them as a community and as like um, a team and a family, um, is super, super important. Um, and I find that your spirit team is really great to go to when you're having trouble maybe engaging with community. Maybe you're having trouble finding community or figuring out how to engage with community in a way that still feels authentic to you, but um, works within the constraints of um, a multi-perspective dynamic. So, let's see. Um, this kind of gets in a little bit to my UPG and a little bit of my um, why I define spirit team in the way that I did. Um, it can be really helpful to um, keep in mind while we kind of discuss this that uh, um, I'm exploring the concept of a spirit team from a multidimensional perspective. And that gets into a lot of the work that I do, but um, I do my best to leave a lot of flexibility for the experience of uh, different cultural or religious beliefs. Um, and this goes for the nuance found on earth and the different cultures and beliefs and um, environments that we grow up in just on earth from one country to the next, one state from the next, um, one culture to the next, um, but also the experience of spirit teams in other 
realms um, or dimensional uh, planetary realities. Um, because spirit teams are not exclusive to those li um, living on Earth. Um, just we have spirit teams, but other beings also may have spirit teams. Um, uh, may that be beings living on other planets that are living in more um, physical dimensional realities um, like we are, or maybe in different dimensional realities. Um, and they have spirit teams and they have their own dynamic and engagement. Um, just because we typically work with our spirit teams on an astral level um, and we're kind of engaging our consciousness from the physical into like the more astral um, realms to work with them. Um, there can't, there's other beings that already live on like different dimensional realities than we do. And so they may engage with their spirit teams in a more quote unquote physical way where they're um, overlapping uh, more heavily um, with the dimensions that their spirit team members are existing on. Um, and that even kind of gets into like, you can get real meta and talk about different universes and how um, they function and their mechanisms and how that all works. But I don't want to get too off kilter, but um, I just think that's important to keep in mind because um, even um, I've even seen uh, demons or middle world beings that have spirit teams. And so that also gets into the makeup of who makes up your spirit team and how they engage with you and what kind of lessons and um, experiences um, that you have with them. All right, so the, um, working with your spirit team is a contractual bond. Um, and what I mean by that is that they're connected to you through a series of complex energetic contracts that are typically conducted in relation to your Akashic records and facilitated by your highest self, um, depending. Uh, the role of contracts is to ensure that your chosen team members are only helping you to be the best version of yourself that you want to be based on the things that you uh, predetermined before reincarnation and also things that you um, redetermine in your current life. Uh, so um, that kind of gets into some of uh, my experiences. Hold on one second, let me let somebody else in. Um, yeah, so um, I have a lot of my um, experience with spirit teams, at least especially in um, recent months, um, working with um, the Akashic Records in the way that I do. And um, the bonds can actually be modified and changed. Um, yeah, like when you, in between reincarnation, there's usually like a kind of a pause, we re-examine, rediscuss some things, addressing what we're going into the next life for, um, assuming you believe in reincarnation, but they can also be addressed in this life. Um, so I got a lot of information about that um, in the past few months when I actually found myself helping clients re-examine their contracts with their spirit team and um, modify them based on um, the choices they were making. And this isn't something that everybody needs to do, wants to do, or will experience, but sometimes it's part of some individual's um, journeys is to learn that that's something that can be done, especially if you're working a lot with boundaries or sovereignty. And that's a big thing that you're working through in this lifetime. Um, th that was the case with one individual I was um, helping because um, this has happened a few separate times now. Um, and part of it was them learning that they were able to enact those boundaries and that sovereignty with their team and readdress their um, kind of the roles that they wanted their spirit team to take and how they wanted their spirit team to engage with them. And I think that's really important to know that that's something that can be done. Um, it can be done by a practitioner, but technically you can also do it um, on your own um, if you need to. Um, it, it helps sometimes to like put it in writing just to have that physical um, aspect to it. But um, yeah, so they're all about working with you in the way that you best need them um, and how you need to engage with them. And um, the, the actual contracts is super complicated <laughs> um, and very energetic. Uh, 
And there's um, also, I'll talk about it a little bit later, there's also intersections between these contracts and how they interact with like our soul body and our soul mechanisms. But um, I really want everyone to know that like, if your spirit team is working with you, it's because um, it's in your highest and greatest good. And it's something that you um, chose to kind of engage with and collaborate with um, in order to help you with certain lessons and perspectives and experiences that you need to have. Um, so it, it's really fun uh, to do the contract work for spirit teams, um, seeing everybody come out. Um, so it, I really enjoy that aspect of it. And I can talk about that a little bit more at the end if you have any specific questions about that process. But I also wanna mention that there are exceptions to um, this, the contracts and the way that they engage um, with you. Um, specifically because um, as I'm about to talk about in a minute with the different um, types of members of a spirit team, uh, some individuals can still be a part of your team and not have the same contracts as other spirit team members, or they may have looser, um, loose, more loosely defined contracts, and they may not engage with them in the same way. Um, that can happen a lot for um, ancestors, uh, soul family, um, sometimes a departed uh, spirit lingering on earth that um, I, I had that um, happen for a client one time. There was a, a spirit that um, was kind of trapped on earth that uh, lived in one of the homes that they lived in and really they, they had kind of bonded and, um, and ended up integrating into almost a spirit team role for advice and um, guidance. So uh, that can, I, I always say that there's, uh, everything is possible um, in some realm or another. So there's always an exception uh, to the rule because um, you can think about it of the fact that um, a lot of our ancestors, um, they still have their own biases and their own perspectives um, that they are going through. And so sometimes uh, they might exist in our spirit team, but they may not be 100% uh, committed to only what um, you need and only your highest and greatest good. They may have their own um, agendas and their own things that they think that they think is the best for you. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not meant to be part on your, of your spirit team. Um, they still can have um, their own role, maybe in teaching you how to have boundaries with that um, spirit team member, be like, okay, I love you. I appreciate your perspective and I'm gonna listen to your perspective, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm gonna do exactly what you think I should do. Um, maybe compromise and different things like that. So um, always exceptions to the rule. All right, so let's chat a little bit about some of the main players of a spirit team. Um, so what's typically, um, it is worth noting that some um, people's experiences and their belief systems are that um, the roles of their spirit team are simply archetypal expressions of the self. Um, and while that's not necessarily um, my experience or the experience that I've seen of some other people, it is the experience and the, um, the role or that some people are having. Um, and in that case, then you'll find that your spirit team is um, a part of the are your multifaceted selves. Uh, so it could be those archetypal expressions um, of yourself, your highest self, your higher selves, um, uh, your inner child, your parent self, uh, your wisdom self, um, even past life um, or alternate life experiences of yourself can come through. Um, you can actually ask to um, say you found out about a past life that you had in a certain experience, you can actually um, ask to um, engage and work with that um, past life version of you because um, they still um, exist in different realms and, and um, have them help you um, uh, work on different um, themes and experiences that you're having. So um, I, I don't want to um, under... Um, underemphasize the role that um, 
we have in our own spirit team. Um, and sometimes uh, when first starting out and even um, throughout your journey, um, some of the best advice and the uh, best support that you'll get um, is from yourself and from um, these multifaceted um, expressions um, of the self. Um, and um, I, I will note that um, the highest self um, from my personal definition is, hold on one second, let me let someone else in. There we go. And just anybody joining a little bit late, you're all good. Um, I am going to send out a recording and everything. Um, just mute yourself and then we'll have time for Q&A at the end. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the, oh, someone else. Okay. Um, and just mute yourselves if you can for me. Um, and we can always go back over something at the end or in the Q&A portion if need be. Um, but right now we're just talking about um, some of the different members of a spirit team. Um, and I was uh, discussing the multifaceted selves and how important that is, is to work with yourself and know that there's a bunch of different um, expressions of yourself. Um, just like there's an inner child, there's also the teenage self. Um, you can even work with uh, yourself um, older, like say, I want to work with myself um, when I'm 50 and, or something like that and um, get that different perspective of these different parts of yourself. And that can be super beneficial. And you could go your whole life just working with the self and um, have a very fulfilling experience with your spirit team. Um, there's also your ancestors, um, which I typically um, um, lineate as um, those individuals that are from your physical body's lineage, um, but it can include meshed lineages um, from things like adoptions. Um, and that those um, are kind of the most common individuals that I see that maybe don't have the same contracts as all of the other spirit team members, um, but, and that in the selves, uh, but uh, they're still super helpful. They can be extremely helpful for um, supporting you in understanding how to engage with um, your, uh, with your culture and with um, the traditions and um, roles that your um, culture and your lineage have experienced. Do, 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 do. Oh, um, I'll just pop in. Um, uh, Lauren was asking, is it unheard of to have the highest self um, of people who are still living to be of your spirit team? No, that um, absolutely um, it can happen. Um, I've, I've seen that pop up a few different times. So yeah, very rarely is something completely impossible in my experience, unless it's kind of tied into your contracts of how you want to experience um, this current um, lifetime, you might have different things that you have decided um, that maybe tie into your um, your culture or the religion that you wanna work with in this lifetime. And based on that, there could be certain rules of like what can and can't be part of your team. Um, so that's an important thing to like, for us to kind of discuss as we're talking about the, the main players and we're gonna get into the roles. Um, a bit and that um, that does have a heavy tie on how you will experience your spirit team. Um, so super um, valid question. So I wanted to, since we were at a good point for that, I wanted to address it. Um, then there's also the soul family, which um, that can be, uh, some people might include some of these as ancestors too, which is fine. Um, but um, I typically define them as um, maybe departed friends. Um, or teachers that you, you had that played a really important role in your life and maybe weren't actually connected to your um, physical body's lineage. But they can also be family members or loved ones from past lives or alternate lives um, that um, are still coming in to be a part of your team and a part of your experience. Um, there can also be um, spirit guides, which they can come in a lot of different uh, forms, but you typically find them um, in the spirit realm or the astral realms and um, mostly exist on uh, primarily when your consciousness is, sh is shifting into more um, eighth to 10th 
dimensional realities is when you'll typically um, find spirit guides. Uh, they can look like anything. Um, they uh, will usually present themselves in the way that um, you best need to see them and to be able to safely work with them and trust them. Uh, but they can typically take a lot of different um, forms. Uh, one of the spirit guides that I work with is the jellyfish. <laughs> um, that's a pretty close picture um, of what they look like. Um, that can also get into um, spirit animals, uh, which some people might call like power animals or um, I'll use a different term. But um, um, I kind of, they technically have slightly different roles normally, but um, for the sake of keeping this in a semi-simple webinar, um, you can kind of understand them in a similar dynamic, um, especially depending on how you um, are choosing to engage with your spirit team and your spiritual practice in this lifetime. Um, some people maybe feel more comfortable working with um, more animal archetypal like um, spirit guides versus um, maybe a spirit guide who is blue and 20 feet tall and um, has wings and is uh, 30 eyes type of thing. <laughs> uh, there's also um, spiritual authorities um, or ascended and or ascended masters. Uh, so that will definitely tie heavily into your personal belief systems in this lifetime and um, how you're choosing to engage with spirituality in this lifetime. So that could be um, a god or a deity. Um, it could also be um, different ascended masters um, like, um, like the Buddha or um, Jesus or something like that. Um, but um, I find that not everyone has spiritual authorities or ascended masters on their team. Um, it kind of depends, but a lot of people do. There can also be a lot of different other um, players on the spirit team. Um, this definitely is not an exhaustive list or discussion, just some of like the primary ones that you will see. Um, there's a lot of culturally specific spirits and beings that can pop up on um, the team, especially if you're meant to be working very deeply with your culture in this lifetime. Um, there can also be, uh, oh, I put spiritual authorities twice for that one, um, but I've also seen shades, um, which are kind of look like shadow people that um, they can be part of your spirit team, um, especially if you, um, I find if you have trouble um, or if you have like a complicated relationship with um, fear surrounding your spirit team, a lot of times they'll show up as shades, but shades are also um, a completely different type of being as well. Um, but that gets into other discussions. Um, I've also seen Grim Reapers be on uh, spirit teams. Um, that's really common. I find um, a Grim Reapers and a Morrigans for people who deal with death a lot in their lifetime. Um, that can be really common. Um, I've even, um, you can technically even have um, a demon or a middle world being as part of your spirit team. If they've signed like contracts that they're, on, that they're only helping you with certain um, roles and um, certain things, then they're bound by that. It can be perfectly fine to have that, especially getting into a deeper discussion about experiences of spirit teams from other beings and other realms and other planetary realities. Um, but I find that um, people who have um, demons or middle world beings on their spirit team, um, they are really good for helping embody and work with chaos energy. And um, that can be a really important and valid lesson to be working with in your lifetime. Okay, so that's just, like I said, this is not an exhaustive list, but this is just um, some of the main members that I tend to see. Um, and um, you definitely can have others. Like I said, um, culturally specific spirits is a big thing. And that's when a lot of times it gets a little bit more nuanced and complex. But let's talk a little bit about roles. So um, I find that there can be a lot of micro um, roles or more po personal cultural roles that can be had. Um, and so it's really important um, to maybe explore um, your cultural background and what traditions um, are found there, because um, that can give you a lot of insight and open a lot of perspectives and doors um, about the spirit team. 
Oh. Um, because sometimes there might be beings on your team that you didn't have the words or the perspective to put a face to or put a name to. And that can be, I find that can be really helpful. Especially if you're struggling with kind of um, seeing the individuals within the spirit team and not just kind of engaging with them as a, oh, well, that was a message from my spirit team or it gets a look, it can help you kind of uh, identify and kind of um, narrow down who they are in an easier way. Um, but uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, self reflectors. So most of the time, those are expressions of the self. Um, so those will be like your highest self, your inner child, those types of beings, and they help you. Um, they they give you. It kind of gives me that um, kind of. It makes me think of the fact of like we always see ourselves in like mirrors, but we very rarely um, see ourselves from like the perspective of someone else, or we very rarely. Um, see who what we look like um, besides looking in like a mirror or a reflection in a pond or something like that. So um, the expressions of the self are a super important part of the team because they help you really understand the complexity of yourself. They help you see yourself from different perspectives that are still your own perspectives. Um, and working with that will really help um, a lot with understanding who you are and what's important for you but what lenses are important for you to view the world through um, in this lifetime? Um, and there's also um, a record keeper. There's always um, a record keeper assigned to every soul that can change from reincarnation to reincarnation and who embodies that role of record keeper can change. Um, it can change in one lifetime or it can um, change across multiple lifetimes. Um, but um, your record keeper can be an ancestor. It can be your high, it can be an expression of yourself. Um, it can be a spirit guide. It can be any number of beings. Um, you can even have multiple record keepers. Everyone has at least one, but sometimes you can have multiple. And I typically find that it's kind of helpful to kind of have that perspective because um, I, I know very commonly record keepers are seen as um, or discussed or like you see them in pictures as having like hooded robes and very like anonymous and that can definitely be the case but it doesn't have to be the case everyone has a record keeper someone who helps um, hold on to your soul knowledge across lifetimes and um, kind of contains all of that information and is basically their role is to help translate and um, give you that information when you're ready for it and in the way that you need to receive it. Um, but um, not everyone knows what record keepers are that may not be part of your belief system. Um, so maybe your uh, record keeper shows up as an ancestor um, and that's um, an expression of them that you trust more and that you um, they can engage with you in a way that is more meaningful to you and that you'll be able to have a more profound experience with. So I think that's super um, important to touch on. Um, we also typically have one or a few guardians. Um, those um, tend to be, um, I guess it's a little self-explanatory, but like your protectors. So um, they, they'll be the ones oftentimes who will help um, if um, malicious intentions are sent your way to help um, deter them from you energetically, but they'll also help you um, give you those nudges um, and those kind of pushes to um, steer you clear of those things. They'll see that something is coming your way or that um, your an experience is possible to happen. And they'll kind of help give you those nudges to kind of make a different choice or go in a different direction so that you can avoid those things. Um, but um, you can have any number of those guardians. Um, it's also important to, I think I forgot to like mention that um, you can have, I've seen people with, um, 50 or so spirit team members. Um, I've seen people with um, hundreds. I've seen people with thousands. You can have huge numbers of uh, spirit team members. So like I said, these are very simplified um, roles and um, players, but you can have um, 
a lot of them. <laughs> um, you also tend to have healers on your spirit team. So a lot of times they help you with um, um, energetic upgrades or um, shifts in perspective. So they will um, often, um, I, I feel like everyone's kind of had those experiences where you feel like you went to sleep and then the next day you woke up and you just had a totally different perspective on something and you're just seeing the world in a slightly different way. And um, it, it feels like you almost like changed on like a micro level overnight. Um, that can be the case um, for healers. Um, you also can ask the healers on your spirit team to help you with things. Maybe you're not an energy worker yourself. You're maybe you don't practice witchcraft or anything like that. Um, and you don't, or you're just starting out and you don't have that intimate knowledge of how to engage with those practices. And um, you can help, you can ask those um, healers on your team to support you um, with um, different um, practices or um, help you with self healing or um, bringing up emotions to process, or even um, helping to secure protections around your, um, your home, different things like that. Uh, there's also the expansion weavers and the stabilizers. I find that they typically make up the bulk of um, the spirit team um, as far as roles go, and they tend to uh, be the ones that are most broken down into micro roles. Um, and so the expansion weavers, um, they're all about helping you out of your comfort zone in a safe and healthy way. So, um, for example, my um, jellyfish uh, spirit guide, uh, they um, very much help me embodying flow and helping to kind of see myself in a in a more expansive role than um, I was maybe taught to growing up. And um, they help me um, find ways to kind of work through um, different experiences. Um, but you can have um, expansion weavers for a lot of different um, roles. Maybe they help you to be more adventurous. Maybe they're they teach you about a specific topic. Um, um, I know some people, um, I know someone who has an expansion weaver um, on their team that um, specifically helps them learn about um, the process of death and um, how that, um, how on a spiritual level that happens to our souls and the process of that leaving. Um, there can also be expansion weavers um, who cover something as simple as um, learning, um, learning to be more kind or maybe learning uh, sovereignty and to stand up for yourself. It's usually things that you're working on through um, your experiences, your perspectives and your lessons. Um, in this lifetime. Um, so that's why I said they can be very personalized and there's lots of like little micro roles that um, can be embodied for that. Um, and there's also um, the stabilizers, which those a lot of times tend to be ancestors and expressions of the self, but they can be um, other types of um, beings as well. And they help you stay grounded. They help to remind you who you are and the role that you have um, and who you are meant to be. They help make sure that you're not uh, following other individuals' leads too much in the fact that you're losing yourself in the process. Um, they, they very much will help remind you who you are at your authentic core. Um, so that's, that's some of the main roles that I tend to see. Um, and like I said, there's always going to be like micro roles and um, more personal or cultural roles that you'll um, experience. All right, so I thought I would um, share some like random little tidbits that I've kind of um, learned and understood about um, the spirit team um, throughout my journey and um, especially through my experiences energy weaving and um, part of that is my um, experience with um, learning about soul mechanisms so I see the soul body in um, a slightly uh, different and more difficult way honestly um, I see it lots of micro mechanisms and pathways um, throughout the energy body. And um, then I also often see the soul um, energy body, um, both the soul existing um, on this um, 
planet and then this physical body and the soul existing beyond that on all multidimensional levels. So um, one um, thing that I've kind of encountered throughout my um, work as a practitioner um, is uh, basically it, it really came up because I was helping someone determine if an energy that kept coming up for them was a spirit team member or if it was kind of a trickster spirit or a, a foreign energy or something else trying to interfere with them. And so what I was essentially um, shown was that um, there are going to always be energetic, just uh, this also goes into the contract work that as part of the contract work, energetic signatures um, are placed within your um, soul mechanisms and your soul um, um, knowledge that, um, um, kind of helps illuminate the nature and connection to a spirit team member. So it can, um, by looking um, at those energetic signatures in someone, I can tell you, yes, that person is part of your spirit team. Um, if there even is a signature there, then if they don't have a signature there, then they aren't part of your spirit team, which then that leads into more complex discussions on if you still want to work with them or not. Um, but it also will tell you what their role is and how you know them. Um, I find a lot of people have um, like soul family members that maybe come from alternate lifetimes um, that won't present themselves in that way um, because you're not in a experience or a place where you um, maybe maybe you're, you're not meant to believe in that in that this lifetime or something like that. And so they present in a different way that's easier for you to digest and understand. But within those energetic signatures, I can see where they came from and what lifetime they come from or if they came from different lifetimes. And that's just one example. Um, but usually I find these signatures in the soul body during, in the intercommunal chamber, which is connected to the authenticity core. Um, so yeah, fun random tidbit. Um, but yeah, that's how I normally detect and determine um, about spirit teams and how they work in their individual roles. Um, and that's also if I'm helping someone readdress their contract, sometimes that can cause a shift in your spirit team. Maybe um, one member isn't meant to be on your team any longer because you've changed the, the roles and the contracts and they no longer align with those new contracts. So then those signatures are removed from the energy body um, as well. But I also find that, that that makes a lot of sense for me and it also um, can be helpful to know and understand is that um, part of that role of them having those, um, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> Um, those signatures within your energy body. It's not a cording system, but it's more so meant to help you have that intuitive kind of knowledge of like, oh, that's my, that's a spirit team member. That's, um, I recognize them. I know how to, and it also helps give them the ability to communicate with you and engage with you in the way that you need them to. Um, so of course everyone kind of has to, you know, it's like, uh, working a muscle with discernment and connecting with energy. So, um, there can always be times when you don't, maybe they do have the signatures there, but you're still learning to trust and discern the energy. Um, so that's important to know too. Um, but also, uh, spirit team members aligned with your highest and greatest good that have, um, have those contractual bonds with you will always be allowed to communicate with you under Akashic light or um, pure uh, source energy. Um, sometimes um, different ancestors and um, members um, aren't able to um, connect with you under um, Akashic light because uh, they're not in your highest and greatest good. They do have their biases, which like I said, doesn't mean you can't still work with them, but um, it kind of puts that lens on things to make sure that um, everything is gonna be engaged with in a neutral, compassionate and truthful way. Um, um, truth as it um, exists for you, your needs and your experiences. Um, so that's super helpful. And I always um, engage with um, my spirit team and also the spirit team of a client under the Akashic Light for this reason. Um, I always will start out um, a session if say I'm 
doing um, a channeling or a card reading or healing for someone that requires engaging with their spirit team to get to um, consult um, on information or how something should be addressed. Um, I always start off in my Akashic Records office and with my record keeper, and then I meet with their spirit team under that um, energetic realm of the Akashic light to ensure that I'm only um, speaking with spirit team members that are aligned with my client's highest and greatest good and that they are who they say they are um, and that they're not masquerading as another being um, in, in the place of a spirit team member. Um, so if that's something that you also work with, if you also work with um, um, Akashic energy, then um, that can um, help you um, make sure that you're speaking to who you think you're speaking to. All right. All right. So from a day to day experience with this um, spirit team member, um, they're always there to help uh, support you in whatever way you need them to be. Um, rather, you're cognizant of them or not. Maybe you don't believe in this at all. Um, maybe um, it's not in your belief system. Maybe you're um, an atheist and you don't believe in any of it. You still have a spirit team. They just um, maybe whatever um, path that you're working through in this lifetime, they know that they're, that you're not meant to believe in them, um, whether it's during a current time or throughout the entirety of your life. So that doesn't mean that they won't still be helping you, but they just won't make themselves as known to you. Um, and so they'll kind of be in the background, like silent support team. Um, they tend to, they're, they're very much focused on helping you um, embody your true authentic self. Um, and they really act as agents of uh, synchronicities. So they'll kind of help give you those in whatever way you need to recognize it. They'll give you those um, little nudges and um, those little symbols and those little um, point you in the direction of different experiences that you need to have to um, help you along your path and help you to feel more confident in following the path that you um, sought after um, when you reincarnated. Um, but your actual personal individual experience of them um, is always going to be different. Um, like I said, again, based on your, your individual um, personal beliefs, but also it, it gets down to what clear abilities that you work with the most. Um, maybe you're more clear cognizance and you get more of that sense of knowing, um, but maybe you're not clairvoyant at all. You have trouble. You're not going to ever see your um, spirit team members because you um, you just don't work with that clear ability, but you, maybe, you know, oh, that's my ancestor. Oh, that's my, um, that's my frog spirit guide or something like that. Uh, so that'll be very, um, personal and it'll depend on everyone, um, how you actually engage with them. But I find the most common way that people engage with their spirit team, especially if they're, um, first starting out or they're not, super into spirituality um, at all is simply through a little synchronicities um, and like the timing of things. And then um, they've, they kind of work with your intuition, um, which also that's another self you can work with. You can work with your intuition self, but um, they'll work with your intuition to kind of give you those magnet pulls and those little nudges. They're like, I don't know, I really didn't plan to go here today, but I just decided that I wanted to, I just, at the last moment, I decided to go. They can very much be kind of the, the silent nudges that made those little things happen. Um, and some really basic tips um, for connecting to your spirit team, kind of like the three main things to keep in mind um, is identification. Get curious about who makes up your own personal spirit team. Uh, one of my favorite um, uh, techniques for doing this um, especially if you're first starting out and you're still learning how to work with your clear abilities is to take some um, blank index cards or take some paper and cut it up or some cardstock. Um, I think I paid like maybe, maybe a dollar for the stack of index cards um, and sit down and um, it doesn't have to be fancy, but you can sit down and just write down um, different names like the, you can write down the roles that I gave you can write down some of the different types so inner child highest self shadow self 
past life self um physical body you can even get specific with the past life self and be like past life self from this earth from earth past life self from another um um experience parent self um spirit guides um um, you can have animal um, spirit guides, um, soul families um, from other um, other lifetimes, other realms, or you can do a soul family from uh, this lifetime. Um, you can do you can get some more specific, like ancestor recently departed. Um, you could do an ancestor from deep in your lineage, and really having those um, different things, you can sit and work with it like you would with a tarot deck or an oracle deck. Um, like cardamancy and um, it kind of depends on how you work with energy and if you maybe if you're first starting out you can maybe ask some of the um, healing spirit guides on your team to help bless the deck um, and set intentions over it and um, set intentions that you're only going to be speaking to your spirit team um, it I do have if you're super super beginner level, I do have an independent study, Bridging the Liminal, which will teach you how to set protections and how to work with energy and work with your discernment and stuff. But then you can sit down and be like, okay, I want to figure out who, who am I speaking to right now? And you can um, shuffle or you can, um, you can, maybe you like the jumper cards and see which card pops out, or you want to just pick, uh, spread them out and pick a card and see which spirit be like okay which spirit team member am i working with right now um is speaking to me and engaging with me now and see what it comes up maybe it says i'm um, highest self or maybe it says your record keeper um and then that will also help you start learning the discernment of their different vibrational frequencies and um what they um feel like and you can also be like okay so i'm talking to um i'm talking to um, a spirit guide right now. Okay. Um, can I have a sign or a symbol that will, um, and that kind of gets into that building a rapport that set this, um, another way of con connecting with your spirit team, start figuring out your personal symbols or signals. Maybe if you're f first starting out, maybe just come out with like one or two symbols that work for your spirit team in general. And then as you start getting more nuanced and start working with them and discerning the individuals, um, then you, you can maybe have individual symbols. Okay, like I know that this symbol is from my record keeper. I know this is the symbols that my ancestors always work with me, um, use to communicate with me, um, et cetera, et cetera. And that will really help you get a more complex and nuanced experiences. Um, um, when you say symbol, what do you mean? Um, so symbols as in um, maybe like for me, um, 107 or um, 1007 is um, a symbol that I look for. Um, it's, it's my birth month and day, uh, October 7th. Um, or maybe it's a red balloon or maybe it's a certain um, butterfly or um, maybe it can, it can even be something as simple as um, a sensation it, and kind of get into what works for you and kind of personalize it to your clear abilities. Are you more visual? Do you need something in the physical? Or maybe you're very, um, um, maybe you have very strong psychic uh, sensations. And so um, maybe, well, when my right ear rings three times in a row, I know um, my ancestor needs to talk to me. Or when I, um, for me, I also have it's a very specific sensation running up and down my spine. Um, it's, it's a, all I can, all I can explain is it's a very distinct um, sensation that I recognize versus just like a normal chill of being cold type of thing, if that makes sense. But whatever works for you, find what works for you. Maybe it can be like, well, um, I look for a certain word to pop up. It's a weird word that you don't normally see much or something like that. Um, get creative and get something that's, I always say you want it to be something that is easy enough that they can provide for you in a sem semi time. Um, you know, you don't want to wait two months for them to be able to show you, well, I need to see um, a blue sticker with yellow writing on a Tuesday. You know, it, it might take them a month to be able to align your, 
align you to see that symbol for confirmation. So you want something that's just enough that you can see it, but also, you know, you can use something like 222 or something like that. But especially if you engage with social media a lot, you'll see those types of things so frequently, it can be hard to really in your gut trust that. Um, unless maybe there's other factors involved and maybe it's like, well, I need to see 222 while I'm up walking around singing or something, you know, you can kind of play around with it a little bit, find what works for you. Um, but with the cards, yeah, just play around with it. And even as you get more into it and you start exploring it on a deeper level, maybe you have some names of specific ancestors. Maybe you, like for me, I have like my jellyfish spirit guide written down, um, or I have like different spirit guides and how they present to me. Um, and you can put that down and you can get when you're shuffling and asking like, okay, who am I engaging with? Once you start getting names or, or like just descriptions of how you see them or experience them, um, you can start adding to that a uh, personal deck and start get even more, get, getting even more specific and nuanced. And I find that that really helps, honestly, in the long run when working with energy in general, because it's an amazing way to start learning to discern energy um, and to discern and trust energy and recognize who you're engaging with. Um, let's see um and then yeah uh, just personalization really getting super I already kind of talked about this but just getting real personal based on your unique perspective your culture your personal clear abilities what your favorite practices are shufflemancy is a great way to get um um connections from your spirit team members and get questions and um vibes of like kind of what energies um, are going on for you right now. So really don't be afraid to like get super personal with it. Um, so now we can kind of have a little bit of Q and A time. Um, so I'm gonna check the chat first and see, I think there was a couple of questions that I missed. And then you guys are welcome to add, if you have other questions or just something you wanna share, you're welcome in the chat or to take turns like popping up after I address the couple in the chat. Um, and then also, if you wanna check me out, I know this was free, but if you just wanna, if you wanna keep up with me on social media, I have a Patreon. Um, I also have a blog with free resources. I have a free 101 guide for how to work with the Akashic Records and that energy and your record keeper. Um, lots of different channeled and just personal um, writings about different things. You can check out on my website. Um, I also offer spiritual mentorships if you wanna dive deep one-on-one -on -one about things. Um, I, I offer readings, I offer um, healings, um, and I also have classes. So um, I have that. And then I also have my, like I said, I also have my Patreon, which is $7.77 a month. Um, and I talk about this stuff more. And I'll talk about whatever basically the people in the Patreon want me to talk about more. If you want me to dive super nuanced and way more in depth on spirit guides, I can do that, that type of thing. So um, let's, let's kind of um, wrap things up with talking about Q&As and anything that you guys had to, you wanted me to kind of talk a little bit more about or clarify. Um, so Sarah was asking, do younger souls tend to have less spirit team members? Yes and no. Um, it kind of depends. Um, I find that people still usually have, um, a good chunk when it starts getting into um like soul family of course if you're a younger soul and you've lived less um uh, reincarnations you're going to have less soul family members because you haven't experienced as many um lifetimes and experiences you would you would still be likely to have a lot of ancestors and you might even be more likely to work more closely with your ancestors um though that's not always the case um, and yeah, technically, yes, you might have a little bit less, um, spirit team members, but you're still likely to have a good chunk. Um, if that helps, I also find that a lot of people are, a lot of people, especially nowadays are a lot older souls than they, uh, than they realize. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, oh my God, the index Oracle card idea is so clever. Thank you. Um, 
I'm pretty techy and need to be discreet with my magic at the moment. So I used a word randomizer instead. But like you said, I set intentions, banishing, or bubble, et cetera. So it shows me the truth. That's a really good, honestly, that's a good idea. Uh, the randomizer, um, not too shabby. Uh, so if somebody else is kind of like in the in the broom closet or whatever and can't be um maybe can't have like the physical cards that could be a good idea to try too or even um you could play around with like shuffle mancy too um let's see is it possible to keep reincarnating as a different type of spiritual person but in this lifetime be spiritually blocked from connecting with your spirit team it's it's definitely possible. Um, I very I very rarely say something isn't possible. So of course it's definitely um, um, possible. Um, that could be like a big lesson that's being worked through in this lifetime is how to overcome that blockage and how to like trust your energy. Um, there also there could be a lot of different factors. Um, creating those blockages. Um, and of course that's gonna be on an individual and personal basis, um, but it is possible. Um, uh, so yeah, <laughs> I, I can't go but so, so in depth on that, but that is, uh, it's a possibility. Um, but everyone is, um, everyone for the most part is capable of connecting with their team. It's more so um, about if they choose to, if they want to, um, or, and learning the tools and maybe their unique perspective for how to do that. Maybe they do it and maybe they are, they feel like they're meant to do it in a specific type of way based on like other people's experiences. And maybe the, the trick is that they're supposed to be doing it in a totally different manner. And, um, once they figure that out and what works for them, then they have no issues. Um, there could be a lot of reasons for blockages. Um, it could even be a case of like needing to address, um, spirit team uh, contracts. Uh, so, you know, without, you know, being able to get too individual or personal, that's kind of my perspective. I wanted to and tried, but can't um, connect. Um, yeah, it, it, it kind of depends. Um, like I said, in, in kind of like a group setting like this, it's hard to get, but so individual and specific on like what would be the reason for you specifically. Um, it could be a good idea to try something like this. Um, like the cards, um, and you could do, um, I, I, I don't think I sat down and did it, but you can also like have the cards with like the actual, like the members, like the types of individuals, and then also have a separate stack or a separate deck with the roles that they play. And then you can even have maybe a separate deck with like, or maybe you have a pendulum or something that's like, yes, no, maybe, or maybe you pull them in um, conjunction with like a tarot or Oracle deck for like additional messages. And you're like, okay, well now I, I, and some of it is like just having to trust the process and um, know that even if you're having trouble connecting to your spirit team, that they're still there. Um, there you always, everybody has a spirit team <laughs> for the most part like everyone has a spirit team so even if you know that they're there even if you're having trouble like making a connection that you are confident and like can trust and know that they're there regardless and um some of it is like building up that trust and um once and then playing around with like the deck and just kind of honestly some of it requires part of my language it, it requires a little bit of fuck it mentality and just be like i'm just gonna i'm gonna just go with it i'm gonna just Say, I'm gonna just trust it. I, I'm, I'm not gonna go jump off a cliff or nothing, but I'm gonna just go with it and kind of like let loose a little bit and just, we're gonna go with the assumption that wh whatever card I pull is the truth and that's what it is. And just kind of start playing around with that and um, really asking them about like the symbols and stuff and the, the things and be like, okay, well, um, I, I pulled an ancestor card recent, um, that's deep in my lineage. Okay, and now I pulled that they're helping me with, in the other deck, I pulled that they're helping me with expanding. And maybe like you sit down and write down some different things, like you're helping me with luck, you're helping me with um, discernment, da, 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 different things like that. And just kind of starting from like a kind of a basic kind of thing. Um, you, I feel my history and past is complex. Yeah, that probably, yeah, we, we have, a, I feel, feel like everybody has a very complex um, experiences and they definitely, um, 
our, our experiences both in this lifetime growing up that we remember and then experiences, um, you know, if you believe in reincarnation from other lifetimes, they definitely play a factor and they definitely can uh, cause some frustrations and um, difficulties. And um, the best thing I can say is to really kind of help hone in on your, what, what works for you, even if it's the most simple thing, find, figure out what you trust, like what makes you trust someone else that you engage with on a physical level? Um, like who do you trust and why do you trust them? And then that can tell you a lot about your perspective and what you need. And then try to kind of bridge some of those qualities that you're looking for and those kind of how do I know that I can trust someone and kind of pull some of those things into that engagement on like the spiritual level and kind of everyone's different. Everyone has different qualities. Everyone has different kind of almost techniques that they use to determine trust and um, kind of bridging that into the, um, the spiritual and kind of using that to build that trust and that engagement. Maybe you, you want it to be a very reliable and consistent um symbol like you like I need to maybe it's that you need to see the symbol um every day for four days before you'll fully believe it something like that so play around with it um yeah that's without getting like like I said too personal or individual that's that's about that's my suggestion um what are your trips for trusting yourself your intuition for connecting communication with the spirit team or any advice with trust I feel like I accidentally already kind of talked about that yeah <laughs> with trust um it, it's definitely difficult and you know start small start with like the little things and then start building it up don't feel that you need to like fully trust um, yourself to sit down and start channeling a whole paragraph about something if you're having trouble even discerning energy. Um, and that's what um, that's why I was like kind of mentioning the card thing because it can be a good way to start discerning energy and learning discernment for yourself in that spiritual energetic realm can be really helpful in building that trust and that confidence in me like, no, I I've had this thing pop up three times in a row. There's no way that that could have happened. Otherwise, um, I, I feel a little bit more comfortable like trusting that and going with that now. Um, so it's definitely, you know, a personal and difficult thing like with that trust and, you know, <sighs> human experiences are, are difficult. They're complicated. There's a lot of, a lot of us have had experiences where we've had our trust broken by other people and, um, maybe we have a hard time trusting ourselves to trust others, um, both on um, a physical um, experience and a more spiritual. So be gentle and compassionate with yourself. And part of that of knowing that they're part of the contract and that they, um, the spirit teams that are part of your highest and greatest good are um, they're, they're only there to help you in the best way that they can po possible. And so it, it, they, they'll help you learn to trust yourself more, to trust them more. They're there to help you as best as they can. Um, let me see, I have two people, I think, raising their hand. Um, I only see, you. maybe it was just one, okay. I don't know, I'm gonna let Kahira go first and then if somebody else had their hand raised, they can go next. Um, hey, everybody. Ooh. Hello. Sorry, I, I unmuted you right as you unmuted yourself and it backfired. Oh, you're fine, you're fine. Hey everybody, I'm Kahira. Um, I'm Secrets Evolving staff as well. So um, I just wanna play off what Carrie said. Um, and as far as like beginning to build trust, um, something that really helped me was like, I, like um, Carrie mentioned using Shufflemancy. And um, how I used my shufflemancy was I would um, begin by like, hey, can y'all give me like a vibe for the day or a perspective that I um, need to learn or 
should understand for the day. And hearing it in a song kind of was very helpful for me to be able to like, I guess, channel that specific energy. So when I needed to know things, being able to get messages through songs and um, looking for the meaning in them um, was very helpful. So sometimes it may be as simple as I needed to see the title of the song. Sometimes it may have been a specific um, part in the song. So a lot of times um, you are getting those messages. Sometimes they can just come in different forms or different ways. Um, so when it comes to just trusting yourself, try different ways, different methods, um, and just keep an open mind and you'll start to see like, so many you know um different perspectives so one of my um one of my signs from my um, team is yellow flowers and um I just kind of started vibing with the energy of what was going on and doing different experiences that they were kind of nudging me towards and it started out I would see like yellow flowers here and there and then um one day like as I had really started you know diving in um I went to um a job interview at the time where I was being very selective and did not want the job but I went anyway and on my way back I saw this like probably two miles worth of yellow flowers out in a field and the just the drive and following that I realized oh, y'all just felt like I needed to be able to see things, to see signs, to notice little things. So just kind of spend time, you know, noticing the small things. And sometimes the small things will, like, I just got yellow flowers in my head one day. I don't even like yellow. So listen to those little nudges in your head and, like, be like, why am I thinking about this? And kind of play off of it. But that's all I really had to say. I just wanted to play off that and kind of add a little two cents. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah, I find releasing expectations of how you think you should have that experience can be helpful. Of course, making sure it's within what you feel comfortable with, but also making sure you're releasing expectations of what other people have experienced and letting yourself just experience it with a more open mind. Um, oh, Starlight Blues, you had your hand up too, if you want to, um, you want to share. Yes. Um, my first question is, um, since the meeting will be recorded, will we uh, can we have like a playback of the meeting or not? Can yeah, I um, it'll probably be, I probably won't be, be able to send it out until tomorrow because I have to let it like format and upload it. Oh, but mm -hmm. um, I'm going to send out an email to everyone who was signed up, especially because a lot of people weren't able to make it to the live. I'm going to send that back. Um, it's going to be an unlisted YouTube link, essentially, for the webinar. I'm also going to send a PDF with the slides oh, from this as well, because um, I thought that might be helpful for you guys to have. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to send that out probably sometime um, in the next 24 hours or so. It's good. And uh, I have, like, my own personal questions. Is like... How, how to say my question. Um, is it like normal? I don't think it's normal to feel like you are always like 25, 24, eight in between worlds. Like I'm physically present in this meeting, but like my head is not like fully like concentrated. And sometimes it really gets annoying because I have some feelings that I jump dimensions without mm -hmm. asking jumping dimensions mm -hmm. and like sometimes I see like numbers to go to my friend's address and it's the wrong address and I go back in the group chat and it was the wrong address that I saw mm -hmm. so I'm like sometimes I'm like why does it why do I feel like I'm not supposed to be here, but to be here. And I, this is a question I should be asking my own spirit guide, my own spirit team. But like, how, how do you, what is your perspective on that? Just want to know. <laughs> it definitely is a complicated uh, question. And of course, a lot of it is probably based on like your personal uh, lessons and experiences you're having in this life wow. and such like that. But um I would say first and foremost, it gets into like some of my personal UPG about consciousness theory and like how that works and how our consciousness 
exists on like all dimensional realities at one time. Um, and you're, you're probably, I know it's very frustrating for you, of course, and I want to validate that. You're probably very skilled. Your consciousness is very skilled at bouncing between those different realities. And it can even bounce in between alternate realities and bounce around to alternate lifetimes and um, different realms and such like that. So I, I do want to validate that much. That that's very much like um, a thing that you can experience and it can be frustrating. Um, it sounds, it, uh, the term that I like to use for it is multi-locating. Um, and I use it like when I'm um, doing services or something and I'm, I'm up in the astral or I'm up in the spirit realms or something, receiving information for the client, but I'm also here relaying that information. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say to kind of help, one of the big things for you, it seems like is finding a way to have more control over where your consciousness is at. Yeah. And when you want it to be fully present and in this, on this planet, in this body, in this current timeline, mm -hmm. um, have, you need to, you, you're in the process, um, it seems like, of kind of learning the skills for how to enact more sovereignty over that and also to ground all of your energy into your physical body. Um, I find that that's super important. And I think Hira popped into the chat to also say um, similar things of like setting boundaries and working on grounding your energy. Um, I say that I always will say the most important mm -hmm. thing to do when you're learning what you're already kind of doing um, of shifting your consciousness into other realities and astral traveling and such like that is to learn how to ground. Because the more of your energy you can consciously have control over and direct into one place, um, the more you'll have control over when you want to move it consciously into another dimension, into another uh, reality. So you need to be able to have control and pull it all in, in um, your body here, um, so that you have full control over it. And that way you can, you're not just kind of dealing with little fragments of your consciousness and um your abilities and you you have all of it here to control at one time um and then you can move it about um throughout different um realities and such as needed um i think ground like really heavily and deeply exploring grounding um would be super helpful um i do have um um, a downloadable old webinar on um, connecting with Gaia and the hidden powers of grounding um, that you can find on the site. I forgot how much it is, but it's not like super expensive, but it's just like a downloadable about grounding, maybe re researching different methods of grounding yeah. and really like exploring it and being very intentional about grounding your energy, like on a daily maybe a multi times a day um, type of yeah. thing and sitting down when you start feeling yourself wandering, really calling yourself back, putting those boundaries and that intentions of like, I need all of myself here. I reclaim all of my energy, all of my consciousness into this um, body at this time. Um, it is so like, and just really like, you need to throw a cuss word or something in there to really yeah. like, hammer it down, like really start enacting that sovereignty of like, I can, I control my consciousness. I control where it goes. I need you here. Come on back. <laughs> you can, um, sometimes I'll, um, visualize ringing a bell or like pulling in almost like a fishing line, uh, because I, trust me, I know, I, I know to an extent what you're going through. Mm -hmm. I, my consciousness and my astral bodies are out and about doing 500 different things all the time. I'll randomly get a flash of being on a whole other planet in the middle of doing something else and be like, oh, I'm, I'm somewhere with blue trees. <laughs> like, and I'll be like, come on back. Come on. I'm trying to focus on this right now. Uh, so I, I get you. Of course, everyone has different experiences, but I, I get that. Um, so I think really like working on grounding really, really deeply could be helpful. Um, one of my favorite tricks for grounding, especially if you're someone who your energy just likes to wander and it likes to do a lot of different things. Um, it actually helps to kind of, it's almost like a compromise and it's like, uh, in a way it's validating and um, soothing that part of yourself that does love that expansion expansiveness um and what i i do is i ground myself my energy almost like tree roots into the center of the earth which is pretty pretty normal pretty 
common practice. Um, but then I'll take it and I'll take that route through. Um, it always kind of formed from a bunch of different roots into like almost like one root um, through the center of the earth into the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Then I'll loop it again down into the center of our universe. If you want to get real extra, then you can um, ground it into the primordial universe. And it kind of, it keeps you grounded and orients your consciousness to where you are at right now. And it's like, all right, I know that I can exist across all time and space, but I don't need that right now. I need to focus on writing this paper. I need to focus on driving to work. I need to be here. So it kind of allows your energy to be like, okay, I recognize that you can be limitless and expansive, but I need us to orient to this earth and to where I'm at right now. So um, that can be helpful. I think really just get creative and explore with um, that process of grounding and setting the, that kind of intentions of like, this is, I want you back here, okay? I, I'm the authority. I'm the authority yeah. of my own life and my energy. Come back, come back home, okay? Yeah. Um, and just kind of play around with it and stuff like that and see if that helps. Um, Thank you very much, Kira. Yeah, I hope that helps a little bit. Okay, let me see a couple things in the chat. Tori was like, oh, one of my primary symbols are butterflies, especially white butterflies. I've had dreams about a flock of butterflies guiding me. That's super cute. Um, yeah, and Kahiro was like working on grounding and setting boundaries. Uh, Tori said the, the downloadable um, thing about uh, connecting to Gaia and grounding is 22. Um, let's see, any tips to slow down the current of messages if you're hanging out with your spirit team? I tried just straight up saying, hey, can we slow down or imagining uh, making the aperture uh, smaller or ground excess energy, but it will go back to 10,000 again. <laughs> I feel you. Uh, it's like, think about like you've been growing up like as a child and a lot of times as like a kid, it's not the case for everyone. Um, we're kind of taught that uh, they're just your imaginary friends. They're not real. And then like other things where it's just like, you kind of are disconnected from your spirit team. And then like later on, we find ourselves exploring it. And it's kind of like your, your spirit team is like so excited, like they've kind of, they haven't been able to engage with you in that way in so long. And I find that they just get so excited that, that you're ready and that you're in that receptive flow of information that they just are chatterboxes and then they all want to talk. Well, what it could potentially be is that they're all talking over each other and that you have multiple spirit team members trying to talk at one time. So it could be helpful to maybe um, try asking like, well, okay, I need one person at a time. And that could even be a good example to try something like with the cards or with the randomization, be like, okay, we said we talking to this spirit guide. I only wanna hear from you right now, okay? Just one person at a time one message at a time, or even you could even like be more literal, be like, okay, I need to be able to write down this message before you give me another one. I want to be able to record my messages and um, kind of set something. It doesn't have to necessarily be that, but set something that's like, okay, before you give me another message, I want to be able to do this. Um, yeah, uh, that, that's maybe something that you could play around with. Um, it's it's kind of tricky though, because they just, it's it's very much like they just get so excited to be able to communicate. And when um, that um, flow of information and communication is opened up, they just want to like flood you with like the downloads and everything like that of the information. So it's kind of, it's almost like you're having to like play kinder, uh, kindergarten teacher with a bunch of little kids and be like, okay, everyone sit down everyone get in a row and I need to speak at one person at a time, one message at a time. We're, we need to take this at an orderly fashion. Uh, you can even hold like meetings with your team. Um, I usually do it in the Akashic Record, but you don't have to, um, but you can actually hold like a formal um, or informal meeting with them and go over like certain topics. Okay, right now we're covering this topic. So one person at a time, what messages do you have about this topic? Okay, now we're moving on to this topic and kind of treat it like that. Um, some of it could be a, like a testing and like a learning of lessons about how to really put your foot down and be like, 
No, I said one at a time, one message at a time, I'm going to cut off the connection to communicate with you until we can agree on to have it in that form. And sometimes it's almost like a lesson or like that kind of thing of like, okay, cool. All right. We wanted to make sure that you were learning how to like, um, really set your authority and like speak your, um, speak your truth and everything. Um, <laughs> I want to be able to write it down. So please one message at a time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of set that type of thing and be like, okay, listen, I'm trying to, I, I, Y'all know my memory is funny. I need to make sure I can remember what you said. So one message at a time, let me sit down and write this down. Who, who's giving me the message? Okay, I'm gonna write down who this is from. Okay, now let me, I want a little bit of water. Now let's go, uh, next uh, next one. Um, oh, and then Kahira said, I also drop my grounding cord out at night so that I'm working on grounding even when I'm sleeping. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful, excellent thing. Um, definitely ground at, at night. Um, that's super helpful, especially if you have an overactive consciousness or astral body and it bounces around a lot at night, kind of grounding yourself can kind of help keep um, that dreamscape and um, a little bit more streamlined and it can also help you sleep a little bit better. Um, also grounding your bed, it's a game changer. Okay, cool. All right. Um, do we have any other like questions? Anything else you guys want to share or um, bring up? I think I've just about caught up to everything. This has been a good chat. Everyone, I always love when people have questions because it, it always makes me think about things in a different way. All righty. If everyone is good, if nobody has any other questions, um, we can go ahead and wrap up and head out. Um, I'm proud of myself. I kept this within two hours. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it. Uh, uh, one last question to wrap it up, I guess. What's your weirdest spirit team experience? That's a question. Um, Alejandra, I have a pact with the birds to poop near me if I am in dire trouble. Kind of gross, but gets the point across. Usually happens in dreams, laughing my ass off. Happened a couple of times in real life. That's funny. Yeah, that's a good thing too, honestly, to have that thing where it's like, all right, well, I need my symbols for when y'all just want to talk to me. And I need your symbols for when I need to really pay attention and something's going on type of thing. It can be helpful to have that kind of dynamic of types of signs and symbols. Um, like, uh, I want you to open my cabinet door or throw a cup across the floor or something like that. And that's gonna, I'm gonna know that something's real serious. I need to keep an eye out for. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what my weirdest spirit team experience is that is appropriate to be shared. Um, um, maybe not the weirdest, but honestly, one of my favorite activities with my spirit team um, is I will um, go up into um, my Akashic office and um, I will I will have like sleepovers with him and I'll be like, OK, well, it's getting about bedtime. We're going to. Um, we're all going to hang out and um, it'll be like well, I'm laying down in bed and I'll kind of like pop up into the astral while I'm kind of like um, settling in to go to sleep and we'll have like sleepovers and um, they'll like play like uh, scenes or like I'll have them tell me stories for bedtime. I'll be like, can y'all tell me like a bedtime story? <laughs> and uh, I'll sometimes it'll be meaningful. Sometimes it's just funny or cute. Um, but uh, I'll do that sometimes or it'll literally be like, well, um, I'm sitting down to uh, smoke some herbal blends or something and we're going to sit down and do a um, rotation and we're all going to sit in a circle and uh, we're all going to share something with each a thing that could be another thing if you're having trouble with uh, <laughs> um, keeping your spirit team um, in in order when they're giving you communications like all right we're in a rotation one person at a time type of thing but um, I don't know if that's necessarily like a weird story but <laughs> um, I love having sleepovers with my spirit team very cute. It's a very good uh, way to kind of, especially if I've had a really busy, hectic day running around and I'll be like, okay, I feel like I haven't really gotten to talk to y'all much today. I haven't really done a whole lot. I've just been running around 
embodied doing my thing on the physical. So uh, we're just going to hang out and um, have a little sleepover as we wrap up and go to sleep. So um, hopefully that satisfies the, the urge for a weird story or inspires you to, um, that's a good way to build rapport with your team. But um, yeah, um, if there's no other questions or anything else you guys want to share, we can go ahead and wrap up. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening or the rest of your day and whatever else you have to do. Um, you, I know I shared it in the, um, the last one, in the last slide, but you can find me on social media, Twitter and Instagram at seeker underscore evolving or my business is seekers evolving, all one word. Go check out my website. I have the free blog. Um, we're also coming up on October 1st soon. Um, check out my Patreon. We also have, I, I do fun stuff like that. And once I build up the Patreon group a little bit more, I want to have monthly Q and A's to just kind of sit down and hang out and chat about whatever is going on. And you guys can ask questions about what you're going through and what you're experiencing in a similar fashion as this. Um, so you can find me on Patreon at Seekers Evolving, all one word. Um, so I'd love to see y'all. Um, keep an eye out for the email coming tomorrow. Um, and um, that will have uh, all this information in it so you can recap. Um, have a great rest of your day. It's been lovely. Thank you for joining. Um, I hope you learned something and that um, it kind of inspired you to deepen your own connection with your spirit team. And I will see you all um, on social media and the world on the astral, um, we'll be around. Uh, bye.